got a thumbs up. Yep, yep I see him. It just goes flailing through the air. I know, right? <laughs> I just want to, one day they're going to put up a foam they finger, thumb, just whatever. Just a sign. Yeah. Uh, Not So Tender Podcast, episode number 31. Yeah. We broke 30. How was your week, Kelly? It's all right. That good, huh? It was, it was typical, I would say. Reasonable. Reasonable. Nobody in crisis, but everybody's kind of fluctuating. I think the weather breaking is starting to lift people a little bit. Yes. But now they're goal oriented. Oh. Which has its pros and cons. There's some there's some new responsibilities in people's yes. lives. Yeah. Well, I, I have couples that are talking about like, I want a garden this year or I want somebody to do lawn service this year. It didn't go well last year or the last 17 years. We're going to hire somebody, you know, like. <laughs> like. They're hard headed. Seventeen yes, years. Yes. Right? Like or kids are starting sports, baseball, stuff like that. Like it's getting real. Planning vacations. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Vacation planning. Well, it's tax time. Oh. That's a big deal. Yeah. What are we spending our tax money on? Dum dum dum. Dumb shit. Dum dum dum. Stuff that will make you fight. Well, you know, every single year what drives me crazy, you'll understand. Yes. I have tattoos that need done yeah or like session three or something like that i can't get in for three months you're done i can't get i gotta wait till fall because everybody has tax money they do people they're all they're all booked up they get so grumpy (laughs) i can only imagine i i got money to spend i'm like yeah yeah. so does everybody right now yeah i don't care dude when um covid when people are getting covid money oh you want to talk about those called the the checks that people got. I know you're talking. That's what I'm talking about. But I forget what oh they're called. God. Stimulus checks. Stimulus checks. That's what they were. They. I probably Stupid got the money. rudest messages ever. I'll take my money elsewhere. I'm like, I don't know you. And I'm booked up like I am normally. And it's okay. And then some. If I can get you in, yeah, I get you but in. Yeah. But I can't. You, you'll go on a list. But I want it done now. That's my big, my biggest issue is like when I want to get my hair done or I want to get my nails done. I'm not bitchy to them, but it's yeah. like, God damn it. Yeah, I guess I'll wait. Little, I'll little, wait till May when everybody spends you, their money. You got to just book it, man. My people just book it. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. No, I can anyway, see that. So that's, that's where we're at. Highly motivated individuals. <laughs> I was raking my yard at, at before I went to work this morning. I was blowing all of the stupid leaves that weren't there. I thought that was going to go somewhere completely no, different. No, no. Not here today on the <laughs> podcast. Not on 31. <laughs> no, there were no leaves when it started snowing, but now there are because yeah. everybody else is and the rest of it. It's... You got to worry about ticks for the little pups. Clean them up, people. No. Yeah, I've noticed people are, are getting a little happier. Yeah. They really are. Um, a lot of people I know just had little grandbabies. Aww. A couple of my clients. I told you I was babysitting. Today. I know. Oh my god. Twin girls. Right? <coughs> oh my god. I couldn't imagine. Ah. Uh, my my grandson fell off the uh, wagon. Bunk bed. <laughs> yeah, the wagon. <laughs> he was sober for like four years. No, he's just hitting the sauce. He went from tying uh, one off at nine a.m. Right? Fermented. He's going hard. Fell off the bunk bed. Fell off the bunk bed. He's good. No, he fractured his arm. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. And then the next day, oh, no. my daughter calls me and goes, you need to come get your grandson. I go, which one? She goes, which one do you think? And I was like, the baby. You knew. What's up? Uh, you knew. I go, what do you do? And she goes, I walked out and my mom's car's there and the mirror is hanging off the side of the car. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And she went and asked the oldest boy and he goes, Mama, I don't know. You know what I mean? I didn't do it. You didn't do it. Yeah. And the, and the <laughs> little one was like, yeah, I hit it with my head. It didn't even like bleed. Didn't nothing. Just didn't knock him out. Like Didn't skip a heartbeat. Was probably just running like, why am I just kept it moving? He is something He's else. He's fantastic. Oh my God. He's great. That's the one that broke his arm? Or yeah, the older one broke Yeah, his arm? she sent me a picture and he's like got his little headphones and he's on his iPad, which she doesn't normally, they don't really get iPads very often. Sure. And I go, how's he doing? She goes, just annoyed that they keep interrupting his iPad time. Yeah. I was like that. To like ask questions. That boy's and no joke. He is trooper. no joke, man. So He's a trooper. You know, our youngest has, oh my God, is this what? Has, yeah. Has 
yet to break a bone. Really? None of my, none of, I think my oldest stepdaughter has broke her ankle before. None of my three or Andrew's youngest. All I broke, honestly, for a long time was a toe. Yeah, I've never broken like, a bone I think either. I broke some ribs in mm-hmm. my life. Um, they don't do anything. You didn't get it checked out. No. Even when I wrecked my motorcycle, I didn't. They did a, a yeah. CT scan. Yeah. I didn't break one bone. That's nuts. I don't know how. Vinny's missing some teeth. Yeah. But that's about this. That's cool, though. It's close to it a Makes bone. him whistle better. No. His teeth are finally coming in. Yeah. He is seven. Nice. They fell out when he was five. He's working on them. They're four, four have some and a half. Ones. He's been like, they yeah. were getting loose from getting knocked over and over and over. Yeah. Well, then my daughter was losing her teeth naturally. And then he was like, oh, God. On it. And I was like, no, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Yeah. Leave him. They all fell out. He did. He had no front teeth for like four, like two years. <laughs> All, all the front four for two years. You should at least got him a partial. No, now they're coming in and there is like a half inch gap. <laughs> like I was like, these teeth are so. He's gonna be crazy. Bless his little heart. He's gonna floss He's gonna rope. need one is like way over here. The other one's over here. I love it. He's gonna need braces. He's a jack o' lantern. Yes, that's exactly what it looks like. It does. It's like he's missing all front four. So he has like missing one and then one's over here and then like missing one in the middle and the next one. Aww. Um, Real cute. I had an older couple that I never knew, you know, new client. She's in her 70s. I was going to say, what's older? That's Se- older. 70, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, early 70s. And uh, she drove dump truck. <laughs> Her whole life. And she That's was cool. Fantastic. She I was bet super she was cool. Awesome. Yeah, she was super cool. And she was getting a tattoo for her dad. And her dad passed away 50 years ago. And he signed a her, card. Her first tattoo or no? Just her no, first No, she had another tattoo yeah. but years ago. But she got his signature, you know, from the card. Like, love you, honey. Dad, love yeah. dad or whatever. And she started crying. She's like, I can't believe I'm crying. It's been 50 years. I said, my kids better cry till the day they die after I'm Absolutely. gone. Are you kidding me? But it was sweet. She said he was a good man. Mm. You know, but her husband, they've been together for 30 some years. It was their second relationship or second marriage. And I go, what do you want your guys' secret? She goes, we just poured everything we had into our homestead. We built a log cabin. We have a huge, you know, we have like 40 acres and we just, that's what we do. And it keeps us busy. And I was like, that makes sense. Yeah. You got to have purpose. They don't have. You got to have real purpose. and bitch. No. And no. They have a common they mission. They have real shit That's to do. That's what they're doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was cute. She was answering the questions. I go, what do you do for work? Bud? And she asked, she goes, I need to quit answering. She goes, you know, can you can answer? Out of and I was like, she recognized like she was controlling the, the conversation. Mm-hmm. And it was cute. He was real sweet. You could yeah. tell they were both really sweet on each other. It was nice. Yeah, having that purpose. So I think that's mm. that was a good client this week for sure. You know, I'm that's trying to sweet. think. I had a nice couple today. They've been together since high school too. And they're super sweet. They just had their first grandson. He's six months old. Mm-hmm. He's a tug, man. He's big. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny when you brought up what you wanted to talk about today because mm-hmm. I've had a lot of conversations about kids and mm-hmm. new, new parents because, you know, I'm tattooing their grandparents. And yeah. they're talking about their kids. Yeah. No, you know, I have. kids. So this this week, I had told Thomas that a lot of my couple clients are coming to me trying to trying to get back to like something healthier. And I know we've talked right. about like how to reconnect and how to not lose the spark or how to like not focus on the fucking spark because it doesn't matter as yeah. much as like what's after the spark or is, the new spark is beautiful or the new spark yeah why don't you go for a new spark instead of going after the old spark right if you're trying to go back to the old spark and it doesn't happen they might go for a new old spark like <laughs> you know what i mean that is what we call a riddle ladies and gentlemen you figure it out for yourself if i don't that, even want to sp- if that's what you identify as the goal yeah and it doesn't get there, that is the same kind of spark you find in a new relationship. Yeah. Is that what you want? We've had that conversation. Like, new relationship Most after people, new relationship. They don't know what they want. They have no idea. So, this week, I told Thomas that I would really like to focus on tips and tricks to try to figure out how to maintain a healthy marriage while child rearing. Yeah. that is, it's hard 
Yeah. It is where the highest percentage of divorce comes in. Yeah, it makes sense. It's where most people feel super alone. Well, I'm going to say people have a ton of expectations that aren't necessarily fair and they're not necessarily talked about in a healthy way like sure. or, or given time to figure it out or reasonable expectations in your mate. Don't think just because you had a kid with your mate that they should think like you. I do think what I see clinically, you're going to have a heyday. Let's go with this. But I think that women more often, not always, this is where you could really go down a rabbit hole, but I feel like women more often look for a partner who could be a good dad. Yeah. And men look for a partner who could be a good partner. Yeah. That she's well, nice to me. Reasonable. She does reasonable. things for me. Yeah. We connect. We have a lot of things in, in not common. Yes. Like she's not crazy. Till they have a kid. She lets me do what I want to do because she does what she wants to do. Till you have a kid. But women scientifically are looking for something different, right? Yeah. yeah. I was in, anticipating you being like, I know so many people who bred wrong that are, were definitely not well, looking, like, think, that's not yeah. what we're looking at. They're, <laughs> listen, if you're breeding with a guy who gives you a lot of attention, that's because he's not at work. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, every person I've had come in the shop and freak out about this person being a shit bag, I go, what does he do for a living? Well, you know, he, uh, he does a lot. It's never like he works 80 hours a week and is in the union. <laughs> no, no. And even if they do work a lot, it's like under the table. Yeah. It's always. It, it's like this jobs. ebb and flow yeah. thing. Well, that, if you got all day to holler at a girl, you think that's attention. It is attention. It is. It's think and enjoy it. It is. Well, I went through that with my husband who works his fucking yeah. ass off. But in the beginning, he did text a lot. But he told me, I don't text a lot. Yeah. And I was like, liar. Here yeah. you are texting me all day, every day. You're trying to seal the deal. That lasted about two weeks Yeah. before he was falling behind and was like, I need to. I feel like I can't be super nice around my kids or my grandkids around a girl. Because then they're going to be like, you're a good breeder. Oh, that's fair. I'm just kidding. But I've seen that. That's, that's you're not. You're so good with kids. You are a breeder. I am. You have offers. It's People true. People want your swimmers. That's true. Good, well, good I mean, genetics. like, yeah. You're Reasonable. tall, smart, and good looking. <laughs> I don't break bones <laughs> easily. Yeah, right. You have bones of steel. Pretty good. Good vocal cords. Lord you have knows a I got a hard beautiful head. Beautiful voice. <laughs> but I do think, so, I think where some of this dynamic has come in is that Women go straight into like being a good mom, right? It's, yeah, I have to figure out how to be a mom and I have to rock it because there's this perfect parent myth that's like running around, Let's right? Call it what that, it really like, is. What? Like everything else, you girls are in competition with other women for no good reason. And it's, it's not even always ugly. The women who are no. crushing it don't always care. It's just like, I went to my daughter's Valentine's Day party. We made slime. Yeah. The other three moms were like, hey, this is, you're impressive. And I was like, I've done this before. Yeah, if you need help, I, let me know. I, it is not hard. I'm not trying to minimize or make you, like, squish you. But uh, I made the slime at home. All they did was, like, add little things to it. And it was like, ta-da. Yeah, you weren't making a nuclear reactor. I didn't, I didn't put in an order for cupcakes. She did. You made a phone call. People are very specific what they put work into. We all are. Absolutely. And it's intimidating. But if you see I'm somebody being a good mom, I don't care. Ask her how she does it. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, asked, she thinks she's I fucking my, better than no, everybody else. I asked my daughter, what do you want to do? I'm in charge of crafts. Could go a lot of different ways. You want to glue yeah. stuff? You want to make stuff? You want to... Yeah. But you're right. Women are in com competition with each other. That's a societal thing that, like, somehow that got construed into, like... Our fault. Not your fault. I get told that a lot. That it's men's fault? Uh-huh. We do this because you guys make us be in competition. I go, yeah, that was, like, two generations ago. 
I'm you not guys, buying that maybe shit. Maybe we're in competition sexually. Really? Or physically. Maybe. Yeah, guys have sex with farm animals. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, well, for now top, ready? Whole... Top 5% men? Yeah, you should fucking have to work harder for top 5% men. Just sure. like men have to work harder for top 5% women. Well, yeah, that's like scientific breeding yeah. structure. So like, good luck. But as far as like your eyebrows and your cheeks and your lips being the yeah. size of, you know, craziness. God knows what. Right. Good luck, ladies. No. People, I I have felt incompetent in comparison to some moms. And I usually check it pretty easy. My daughter was in cheer this year and I was a cheer mom and they needed a volunteer. So I volunteered to be cheer mom. I can see it all over your face that like there's not a world in which we live where Kelly's a cheer mom. All I had to do was Wait, down. Think, you're like, I thought y'all said beer mom. Beer mom? Be <laughs> got you. I <laughs> got you. All I had to do was download the Bluetooth speaker to my phone and push play. That's it? On like their dance. You DJed. That, I DJed. That's all I did. DJK, DJK dog on the one. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. And I like started a group text about like who's bringing snack because I ain't bringing snack every day. But it anyway. Nice. We do <sighs> compare and we do have this expectation that we're supposed like our kids are never supposed to cry. Our kids are supposed to be kind. Our kids are supposed to get straight A's. They're supposed to be in 45 different sports and academic. Like that's not real. No. Ever. But that's the narrative of the mom, right? And in, in this website that we're about to refer to or this topic, the narrative of the mother is I have to crush it. I have to crush it or I'm not a good mom. Yeah. Men are trying to figure out how, what a good dad looks like while also trying to be a good partner for their wife. Yeah. So they're wearing two different hats. And provide. And and providing and trying to figure I'm out how this. I'm not saying women don't provide, but. no. But their approach to this whole family is different. Our They're value trying... as a man of what is is important as a father and as a husband is very different than what I've seen of most women's view of what a good mother and a good wife is. I'm saying that statistically, <clears throat> I don't think it even compares. Men are trying nice, to... Darling. I know, No, I, I will nice. say it. As a woman, this is what I see. Men are like, I have to provide... For my entire family, I have to be a good husband to my wife and I have to be a good dad to my kids. Yeah. And women are like, I have to be a housekeeper and a mom. Yeah, I have to be a gardener and a yes. mechanic. That's it. I mean, there's very, like, we've talked. I had a guy say when his wife was like, you need to blah, blah, blah. He's like, cool. You need to change oil on the gas, you know, and do this in the lawnmower. And she's like, what? That's not my job. And he's like, I, where, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. it's one thing if you said, hey, is there any way you could just throw this wash in it, blah, blah, blah. When you start being dictated to, no one likes that. No. Right? No, and, it, and it's so easy to slip into. Like... Pink job, blue job. I, I pride myself in being pretty self-aware. Literally my job, but also I... As I, a human, yes. Right. Smudge, my puppy. Andrew came home today and he was like, I feel like there's mulch in our living room. Yeah, probably. Why is there mulch? Just puppies love chewing on mulch. I was like, well, my guess is going to be that Smudge brought a stick in because sticks are all over my yard and he loves them when they barely hang out of both sides of his mouth. Yeah. And then he brings them in and he chews on them. It becomes mulch. It becomes mulch. Didn't start off as mulch. Didn't start off that way. So I came in and I was looking at what he was looking at. I was cooking, playing with these babies. Yeah. Trying to get ready for the podcast. And I, a I asked him, hey, would you mind sweeping this up tonight? I could take five minutes to do it now. I would I would rather make dinner and get ready. Would you please? Some some partners in the world would argue you shouldn't have to ask him. I gotta go. I don't I don't have to ask him. I would argue that that's true. We both are looking at the same thing, right? Like there's mulch, and if I don't sweep it up, you should sweep it up. But it doesn't hurt me to just ask, to just bring it to the forefront of his attention because I'm not going to now. He doesn't know what you had going on either. No. All I had to do was just look at him and be like, hey, would you mind sweeping this up tonight? I'm going to come home at, it's late, y'all. So 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And if it's not done, I'm just going to sweep it. Yeah. It, I, I could die on that hill, but like for what? Well, there's bigger fights to fight sometimes. 
I would honestly prefer to sweep that up, even though I asked him then to like do the dishes at the end. Do your own dishes. He didn't make that mess. I can. I, anyway, thank you. But it's not. But that's the things that people. Oh my god! Base their value they, on. They get so caught up on it. But my point is, husbands are trying to wear multiple hats. Women are trying to be a good mom. Women, I apologize because I am a mom who feels like I wear fifty million hats. I have to. Different kids. But it presents so differently. So the topic for tonight is called balancing marriage and parenting at the same time. Often I see people in couples counseling where they have like, typically they have three. (laughs) Because it's always that third one that fucks your whole world. Yeah. You're outnumbered. Love my daughter. She was my third, and my mom warned me, and she was right. You, you are. There's it. just always. It always breaks. It. It's like a third dog. It is. Three kids can't play together without fighting. No, nope, they always fight. Every single time. I have five now. Two are fine. <clears throat> Any two are fine. A third one, they're fighting. Odd numbers. You're always outnumbered. But yeah. typically, I see couples that have three kids. Most often, they are tend to like. Four. No, they are usually tend to like two. Wow. Somewhere in between. That's a gap. It is. But like those three kids usually fall somewhere in there. And there usually isn't a baby, like a baby baby. They're usually between it's one and two. They're they're mobile. They're into more. And, and they're napping. So that always kind of like. They act like little drunks. Messes with everybody's day. They have to lay down. Yeah. And people come to me and we've talked, like I said, about like reconnecting or how to like keep your love alive or your spark alive. But I think that's only focusing on half of it. The other half is like how to parent together. Right. Because nobody talks about that before they start having babies. Well, they assume a lot. They do assume a lot. And people will agree on things just to shut someone up. People will agree, even if it's not that aggressive. People agree, hypothetical. We are talking about hy- hypothetical situations. Yeah, it's like me asking. They've me never what, had a baby. What would you spend your lottery money on? No clue. That's what I'm saying. But like, you could give right. me an answer, but I'm not going to fucking hold you to that. No. So when people want to have a baby, if they're if they're blessed enough to plan it, <laughs> realistically, yeah, they're like, well, I you know, I I would work full time, but you would work full time. I don't want to give up my career. You don't want to give up yours. So we'd have to. Sh- like share responsibility and they're like yeah partner a regardless partner a works nine to five a desk job yeah comes home partner b well, let's even say they work like six to three they're home earlier but they're like roofing all day you <laughs> yeah, know like hour drive home yeah they don't have as much energy and nobody takes that into consideration hypothetically. And some people just can't handle it. They think they can handle it until they get there. There's times I've gone, I can handle this. And I yes. get there and I go, what the fuck am I doing this here? This is awful. awful. I can, don't want to. Kids are not, I would rather work a full-time job than raise a toddler. All day. Listen, I had those two beautiful babies at my house and my husband and I were both like, oh my God, we forgot. Our youngest is seven. Yeah. You forget. Yeah, puppies are cool for like a few oh, hours. How sweet they are. And Andrew's like, I want to bring them home. And I was like, I don't. And he was like, maybe for the day. And I was like, I could do this. Anybody. Yeah. Randomly, you want me to Your babysit your babies yeah. all day long. Don't just drop babies off at her house. Maybe. But weekends? I would say okay. But like, yeah. I don't I don't want to start over. I got and asked was that like, the yeah, other no. day. Like, would you ever consider having more kids? Thomas, did you say no? No, oh, I was like, let's go. Oh my god, let's go. No, I didn't say let's go. He is. A it wasn't an baby offer. Maker. It wasn't an offer. It was just a act like a conversation, yeah. you know. And I was like, you know, you I, done it's, now? No, I, dude, you're not too old. No, that's the thing. Fuck. Your mentality is different. I'd be a better father now than I've ever been. Listen, that all day, my thought was, I am 37. I would be such a different mom 100%. if I had a baby today. Me? Come on. It made me sad a little that I was like, I, I wasn't a bad mom. I would just be a very different mom. Yeah. You wouldn't now. let shit eat you up like it did. No. I would let them cry because they cried and I was like, oh, look at their little lip. You didn't shake them? No. No, I shake them. They were both crying I'm kidding. At the same I don't time. shake them. Don't shake them. All right. Yeah. 
So, balancing marriage and parenting. I do have a baby boy puppy that just turned one. He's so fucking cute. He's still so fucking cute. I'd like to get them together sometime. Yeah. I think they'd have fun. Terrorized. <laughs> Number one's going to make people so mad. Let's go. <laughs> Number one. So, steps. Keeping love alive while you're raising hellions. Number one. Send them to bed. Yeah. This is monumental in in my everyday life. I've learned something about newer moms. They love it's not even these little it's not even newer moms. Night, it's not newer so moms. So they can sleep Thomas. in all day. Mm, that's that's true. That's that's younger moms. Yeah, I see it all the time. And I'm like this. younger moms. They stay up late. So what? It's not hurting the baby any to stay up late. And yes, then they, it is. I, I know. Yes, this is, is their narrative. He stays up, I say. What time does he, he go to bed? He won't sleep. You let him sleep till fucking 1030 in the after, like morning, 11 in the morning. No shit. He was laying in your bed on his on his tablet, on his tablet until midnight. Get the fuck out of here. So that he slept until. Dude, my night. grandson would walk out with his blanket and go night, night time. Mm -hmm. Like he's done. He's fucking he's done. He's on a schedule. I yeah, bet. he's been hunting. Mm -hmm. He's been fishing. Mm -hmm. He's been doing dude shit, knocking off mirrors. He don't have time for that shit. He's got a cast in his he blankie. Does. He's ready to go. Toothbrush in his mouth. And his big like, bloodhound dog named Moose. <laughs> so it's not always young moms. I actually have two moms currently on my caseload, bless their heart, that they are in their head leaning so hard into motherhood, being 100% available, that when they're teenagers... <clears throat> want to talk to them. We're talking, I guess, 12, not a teen, but you know, adolescence. Teen. Yeah. That's the only time he talks to me because he's done with swimming or he's done with baseball and like I'm done with work. And 12 like, year old could stay up a little later. Not a 11 o'clock at night. I stayed up that late. Here's my, my mom said a rule very simply. If you are a pain in the ass to get up in the morning, you'll go to bed at 9. Yeah. If you do it again, you'll go to bed at 8.30. You do it again, you'll go to bed at 8. It will keep, Yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like, get up. That's the biggest thing. And, if, dude, if, they, if they're slow to get up every once in a while, like you're not. No, I hate waking up in the morning. We are I, very different. That right. Way. Yeah. You sure. know, but I'm not going to freak I am just not a morning Dude, person. my youngest daughter is not a morning person at all. Yeah. Okay. And some nights she doesn't sleep great. And sometimes she's a little cranky in the morning. I go, you're yep. good. I don't make it my problem. You're grumpy. You still have to go to school. This is saying, though, so send them to bed, meaning you are no longer at a certain point going to get my attention. Yeah. So even if you do have a 14, 16, 18-year-old, if you are in a, a marriage, a committed relationship where you guys go to bed at 11... Maybe your kids yeah. shouldn't have access to you until well, 11. That's a different, that's a different that's scenario. That's what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. So that's a different scenario. Now, listen, every once in a while, if your kid's talking to you or wants to really talk to you about something. Oh, sure. But if you're just showing each other TikTok videos, go, hey, I'm going, you just go, I'm going to bed. Look, I don't give a fuck who's at my house. TikTok. I don't care. If I want to go to bed, mm -hmm. I'm like this. I'm going to bed. I'm that old dude that just like where dad would just be like. Fuck y'all. Good night. See ya. <laughs> Andrew does that all the time. He'll have his siblings over. And he'll just like stand up and be like, I'm going to go take a shower. And then I'm left. Yeah. In the living room. Yeah. And I'm like, bless your heart. I thought his family had to help but I don't, or no, something. No, no. Like, he just, he, he gets up in the morning. So he's like, hey, I'm going to go. He bails on me and leaves me high and dry in the living room that I'm like texting him from the couch. You motherfucker. I hope you slip and fall. This is your brother. Yeah, I hope you get that send him home next time hair. you have to go shower don't just leave it up for me yeah but no this is saying for a lot of couples the only time you have when they're young is the evening because they wake up at the crack of dawn just like you do because you have tired. to leave the house yeah. so if you go to bed at nine un set some sort of structure to say you're gonna i don't watch it show or read in your bed Dude, or 7 30 bed you know bath time you know what I Something. mean? Something. Yeah. yeah. To to when they're little. Chunk. Yeah. To chunk. Dude, most kids don't want to fucking hang out with their parents. Give me a fucking break. Some what kids really parents want to, do that? want to talk hang out I with know. their kids. I know. 
that's where this comes right. up. I have, it like I said, I have two moms right ego. now that are like, that's the only, that's the only calm time. I lay in their bed. We sit on the couch together. We watch a movie together. That sounds wonderful. Well, you want me to break Meanwhile, it down? Meanwhile. Ready? Get used to it because that's what single moms do. So that's a single mom thing. You're prepping. Yep. I just, I'm like, your husband is also resentful and or in tears. Honest to God. Because all he wants, he's been dadding with you yeah. from five to eight. He wants, all he, he wants 45 minutes, not even for sex. Honest to God, that's not always what they want. Or just cuddle up. They just want to talk to you. Yeah. Something that doesn't Some include do. the kids. Yeah. Guys that are saying it, then you should listen. Yeah. Listen Why can't it. we just have time together? And a lot of, a lot of dads that I work with are like, as soon as the kids go to bed, I'm not saying this is wrong, but this is something common that I hear. The kids go to bed. She's taking a bath. She's reading a book. He's already asleep. She, she's unwinding and engaging in self-care, which is what we tell parents to do. It doesn't include them. Listen. So they're like, all day long, you are momming. Bless now, your heart. Now you're and now you're unwinding. Treat yourself. And none of that includes me. And then you come to bed at 11 they're laying there looking for like any sort of romantic, intimate interaction. And they like turn off their nightlight and go to sleep. Or they jump into bed and start talking about something super negative about what went wrong with that day. Yeah, that's so, true. That's great too. We talked about that. That's true. Go back to the first couple ones and look at your bed. It's supposed to be a sacred space. Absolutely. Bitch in the morning. Not the place. Bitch Not the, the place morning. or the time right before you go to sleep. Bitch at noon at lunch. If you have something to say, say it. Yeah, not in bed. No. Say, I want to talk about something. I'm going to lay it out there. This is what we're doing. At lunch, not in bed. Yeah. Okay. Next. So send them to bed, number one. Number two, daily check-in. Take a few minutes each day to check in with each other. Or maybe just after the kids have gone to bed, you could each share a highlight or a low light of your day, something. Yeah. This is tricky. So this is something that I've started working with clients about is that you're not, I want you to watch your verbiage. Do not ask your partner how their day was. That just causes them to reprocess their entire day. How was your day? What happened today? Yeah. And they just unload like we, like we do at the beginning of this. But I always for ask three my daughter, did you hours, have a good day today? How, different? how did you feel today? Yeah. How are how are you feeling about your day? Yeah. I just Keep go, it emotionally based as opposed to logistical. I don't ask her how school was. I go, how 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 was your day? How were yeah. How were yeah. you today? Yeah. How were you? How are you? Yeah. When That's you're coming way. home. What what mental space are you in? I like that. If there's something they want to talk about, they will bring it up. Absolutely. Actually, let me tell you about this one bitch. You know, like yeah. but when you when you're already lacking connection and already hyper focused on logistics, when you it's the same thing of how was Jacob's day? You know, like, and they're like, oh, he hit his teacher. <laughs> like they rehash things. If you say how's your day, that's what people go to. Yeah. That's a huge topic of conversation that promotes zero intimacy. Some people don't want to talk about their day. I'll tell you this right now. Girls are obsessed with hearing about men's days. He never shares his day with me. He never talks about his day with me. Yeah, because we're not at fucking work anymore. And one thing we've learned to do is leave work the fuck at work. Because any Damn. man who bitches about work nonstop, then the wives are like this. He never shuts the fuck up about his fucking job. He can't just leave it to fuck. So listen. There's no winning. No. My ex-husband was that way. And now since graduating and being in the field... I have realized what the gap was like, I would ask him about his day and he would give me a very minimal response. Yeah. He would not ask about mine. I would start in on mine and he would say, I don't want to talk about work when we're at home. And he would shut it down. And he might've heard that one time to say, Hey, leave work at work. You want to have a healthy relationship? Mm -hmm. Leave work at work. He might've thought he was doing something. Not my ex. I, I don't, I know, but I'm saying, well, I you realized, never know how someone gets there. I realized after the fact that I did not want to talk about my work. I just wanted to talk. Yeah. And that was the easiest thing to talk about. 
when I tried to talk about work, he would shut it down and he would be on his phone or he would play video games. So like, I was offended that you don't even want to hear about my day for 30 yeah. minutes. And if you break it down, like what changes if you tell somebody about your day? You Nothing. feel vindicated. It, it, it I know. fills I a know. gap. It I fills know. the awkward gap when you don't know each other anymore. Yeah. That's well, what it is. Play Sudoku together. Play Yahtzee. Anything. Listen, I sent a whole hobby list to my one couple this week. And yeah. they were laughing at me. And I was like, I don't give a shit. Play if Euchre. you like any of these things. Number one, because it's like categorized. Number one, it was like animals in nature. <laughs> what did it say? Observe uh, animal show of some sort. And they're like, you want us to go to a dog show? I'm like, I don't give a shit if you go to a dog show. I'm just saying, could you? Could you? Yeah. One time, I bet it would be funny. Yeah. And they were like, Get out of that's your fair. Zone. I was like, you have to start making memories. Because when you start ball. dating somebody, you talk about childhood memories, yeah. past memories. And then you date and you make more. And then you get married and have kids and there are no more. Right. About you guys. You're not making memories. I'm like, some of my, like top three memories that are hilarious are with my current husband right? because we've done things. We both went snorkeling and thought we were going to die. Jesus. There was a moment y'all we, we hopped off the boat, like off the side and we like made eye contact in the like choppy ocean water. Impending that we were like, this is it. This, I love you. <laughs> take my picture quick. We both got like those plastic camera yeah. cases. Take my picture. I'll take yours. Last one. Because this is it. Wow. That's yeah. That's gross. That's important. So daily check-ins. Actually, a lot of a lot of couples get so caught up in the day-to-day -to -day logistics that they forget that their partner is experiencing life yeah. on a daily basis. How are you? How was your day? Yeah. How are you feeling today? But not to be a dick, most people are not even competent enough to even do anything with that or even, like, it's weird. No, ask. And not in, like, the, I also learned I have a new client from a different country that she was like, America is the only place that they say, hi, how are you? And they don't expect Listen. a response. She's like, that's weird. You guys are weird. Yeah. In other countries, they just say hi. Good morning, good evening, good Keep night. moving. All you, it's a greeting, not a question. She's like, you guys ask a question and then walk away. <laughs> like nobody. And she's like, if they respond, they give a bullshit response because they know you don't care. You weren't actually asking. I always say I'm fucking awesome. She moved from a different country and she took America 101. And that was one of the things they taught them. Wow. When they ask, how are you? They don't mean it. She's right. She's absolutely right. Yeah. I'm She's like, you guys are that. like kings of small talk <clears throat> that you don't care about. Listen, I have a boy that comes in that works with me and he comes in every day and I'm always there an hour before him mm -hmm. and I can hear him. I can literally tell when he comes through the door. Like I just know it's him yeah. and I'll, hug, I'll, I'll yell his name and he's like, yeah, what's up? I was like, what's down? And he just looked at me. <laughs> Probably a lot of things. Weird question. It is. A, it's a weird it's a weird way to word it. Next. Be affectionate. Say I love you every day. Yeah. In front of the kids and hug and hold hands. Often the kids will make faces. My little one, my youngest, my eight-year-old constantly. I, I kiss Andrew. She's like, gross. We're not making out. It's affection. But there, she's at that age, right? Where yeah. everybody who kisses gross. is gross. But show affection in front of the kids. Jeez. Don't make it. No. A separation of church and state. No, like, make it normal. Yes. I had somebody talk about their parents like, I've never seen my parents be affectionate with each other. It says they'll make faces, but secretly they'll be glad. Because they'll be like, my parents love each other. They loved each other. Openly, honestly. Yeah, good or bad. Unforgivably. They were unconditionally themselves. Yeah. The next one kind of piggybacks and says, take time to be physically intimate. It says sex is another great way to strengthen the bond between you two. Or it's get out some piss and vinegar. Yeah. Anything. Right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I have had this conversation because by the time people come to me clinically, they're already kind of not in a great spot. We know that. The well is dry. Right. 
And so they're like, I don't want to have sex with you because you don't do these things for me or you don't help me. So you don't feel like a partner. So it feels transactional. Yeah, this is where my autism I know, kicks I'm, in. This is where the autism kicks in. No, because you'll break up with him and you'll go fuck a guy from Tinder that you don't know that's never done a fucking thing for you. Mm-hmm. So this, both guys don't do anything for you, but you fuck him because you haven't built any resentment towards him yet. It feels like betrayal from your partner. Yeah. Yeah. It be it becomes transactional. You do something for me as my partner, and I'll do something for you as your partner. Let me know how it works out. It doesn't work out great. Oh. Ten times out of ten. So I'm going to fight with you till I have to do it completely on my own. Yes. Right? Yes. It's great. It's wonderful. It's great logic. Re- regular sexual intimacy can reduce <clears throat> friction and stress. Cause friction, too. Literal. Rug burn. Yes. Carpet burn. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing it right. Chub rub. Doesn't Jesus matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. All walks. You small kings know about chub rub? <laughs> chub rub typically is talk is made. Smashing pumpkins record. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Some people out there know what chub rub is. It's real. But it's saying just pause. Yeah. Don't don't get to a point where it's a pawn. Yeah. If you're already there, it's ugly. It's That's currency. gross. Yeah. It's currency. It's transactional. Just snuggle, like you already said. Snuggle them. I, Work your way back into it. I if learned you very valuable lessons, man. Yeah. No hug her. Don't hug her around the waist. If she shrub, shrugs you off every time, hug her like a person, like a, a human, like a human. I was gonna say like a like a family member, but like. Anybody that you care like about, somebody you love. like somebody you love, start where you're at. Quit trying to jump 13 steps ahead and act like you earn it. That isn't helpful either. So yeah, everybody needs to understand where you are. The next one is go on dates. With other people. Obviously. Definitely will put you in a better mood. I do <laughs> think that it's worth talking about that like stay at home dates are still dates. Can. They sure. can. Yeah. Because sometimes people have multiple children who are hard to find a sitter for or their natural support system just looks different. Yeah. So I say like you guys need to go on date nights and they're like we don't have anybody. Like Hey boys in there. Look up the definition of date for me. I want to know what the actual definition is cuz I think a bunch of people have never looked up the actual definition of it. I'm going to use the bathroom. Uh-oh. Look that up. Yeah, go you ahead. Can I can you, do this. You can do it. You She's can... taking a break. We're going to talk about break. what a date is. Most people have never talked about a home date. I think a date is, is um, spending time together and doing things together. A dinner date is exactly that. A dinner date. A dinner and a show. Those are very different things. And I think if you put it on somebody else to do that. Do you guys got a definition? Let's hear it, Justin. A social or private. Okay, a social or romantic engagement. So, or appointment. So, that's pretty broad, right? I like it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So, define date. How about when you start dating somebody, look up the definition of date. I don't know. I think dates are important to do, but like making somebody plan a date because you don't want to plan it, but you insist they plan it, you're still planning it. And I definitely have struggled with that. So... Most people just, you want something, say, hey, one night do you have free this week? And go, and they'll be like, oh, Thursday, and go, cool, don't make any plans. We're going to go do something fun. Okay. It's a pretty simple concept, I do believe. Going steady, yes, Justin brought up that. No, but you're hanging out with someone. I don't know. And 
you're dating, it's a pretty loose term. I can hear Kelly making her way back to town. I think dates can be the, actually cause more issues sometimes too if you don't approach it properly or kindly, you know? And it doesn't mean like, you never plan any dates. I'm like, did he ever? <laughs> you know? Imagine if guys demanded girls plan dates all the time like girls do. Girls would love it. Shut the fuck up. They would. You can they do would. it. You can already do it. Well, so... I <laughs> like, like... So often, actually what's come up, because this is a point of contention between yeah. couples, <laughs> is that I will ask a guy. I just did this like two weeks ago. Sir, are you able to plan a date? And he kind of looked at me funny, and she looked at me funny, and I was like... I mean that. Yeah. Because he could plan it, but is is he aware of your family calendar? Does he have the phone numbers of your 18-year-old babysitters? The right access. Can he actually or no? A kid could make a cake, but that doesn't mean they can get to the store to get the fucking ingredients. No. So, and he was like, no, I have the capability. And I was like, I'm not saying that you don't, you're 40 something years old. I, I'm not yeah. asking if you have the ability to sign on to Google and like <laughs> Google a restaurant. Yeah. I'm saying I. He's like, I could door dash from Chick-fil-A. What's up? I bought hockey tickets for Andrew and I this Friday and texted him and said, we have hockey or we have a date night planned for March 1st. I don't know that he would be able to do that because I am the keeper of the calendar. Yeah. He would have to text me and say, what's so-and-so's work schedule? Do we have anything that... He doesn't know. Yeah, and everybody's different. You know, maybe some wives would be like, if a guy was like, hey, baby, we need to go out. Why don't you figure out a good time and a good time for a babysitter? That's what Andrew does. I need a date Is night. that acceptable for you? Yes, because that shows that he wants to spend quality time. Yeah. I need a date night. Tells me I need intimate interaction with you yeah. outside of our house. And I'm like... We call it a Got romantic it. appointment. A romantic appointment. That's what a date is. Is that the definition? Yeah. That's interesting. Well, that doesn't dictate where it is or what it is. No. I like that definition. That's what I'm going to name my next record. Romantic appointment. Well, and that came up. <laughs> we have so many band names and record names now. It's going to be killer. It is going to be killer. I'll sing Best in the background. Best mixtape La, 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 la. <laughs> Best mixtape of all time. But we've had conversations about how to rebuild connection. And it said like making rituals, making time for each other, chunking. Yeah. To make I'm... sure that you get. Mm -mm, let that one go. <laughs> let that one go. <laughs> we already talked about chub rub. We cannot also talk about chunking. <laughs> Deal. But try something new. Yeah. Learning something together is kind of a really big deal. Sometimes. It yeah. can be. But just know who you're fucking. I mean, literally, know who you're dealing with. You're asking too much. You always do. Well, I don't understand why you invest into a home and children with somebody. You you are surprised that he doesn't want to go to the fucking play. I know. I mean, like, that's the dumbest shit in the world. It's because what my actual clinical view is, is because it what when it was the two of you, he was giving you 20%. He's still giving you 20%, but the rest of it is overwhelmed. Yeah. When when I get a date night with you once a quarter, I don't want to go to a play. I want to go to something we both enjoy. When it's just us, I have 14 dates in between that. Yeah. So I don't care. I don't care. We can go to a date anything. night. We can go to a play. We can have a romantic sure. appointment. We can go to a outdoor movie with lights we can buy a projector screen for like the extra romantic yeah or whatever you just sit there next to each other reading books separately and just touch your like next to each other on the couch i told one couple this week i was like have you guys ever watched like a, a show together yeah and they're like yeah we do that a lot i was like could you watch it not together and they just like stared at me i was like seriously you work midnights, he works days. So instead of only watching it on weekends, what if he watched it and you watched it separate, but you would have something to fucking talk about? Yeah. Or something. 
so- something that's not your kids and not your work. Or just enjoy that you don't have something to talk about. Enjoy that you have a peaceful life. Do that you your realize relationship is fine. That you realize that when it's quiet and you're not talking to each other, that means you don't fucking hate each other too. It's is true. that fair? Yeah. Imagine if you were just enjoying our lives together, right? Just and going you're busy and I'm it. busy and I'm like, what's up? How was your day? Good. I'm not supposed to ask you that. Sorry. How are you feeling about your day? And then you're like, no, it's great. And I was like, cool. I got to go mow the grass, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what do you want to do for dinner? And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Cool. I'll see you in a little bit. And you're like, he barely talked to me about his day. It yeah, because my day is good. Because it, cause it's good. Isn't that the point? Dude, you do the same shit. Most people do the same shit every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. I climbed a fucking pole. I fucking flipped a burger. I fucking did this. Like, no shit. Like, what do you think's changed with the same guy that's been working the same place for 15 fucking years? Nothing. Bill's a dick, you know. <laughs> Like there's always the dick. Yeah. There's the office bitch. Every, there's or, like. Yeah. And if you don't know who that is, it's you. <laughs> Facts. There is an office bitch and yeah. a workshop dick. And yeah. it might be you if yeah. you don't know. If you're like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, it's you. Next. The next one is pray together. Oh, you mean like hunt people? No. Damn it. It says for if you are people of faith. Having a common goal in your spirituality, if you met in that, yeah. oftentimes when you have young children, that is when you stop going to church. That is when you stop praying. The kids are too young. They don't understand. There's germs. <laughs> Not in our families. <laughs> There's germs at Sunday school. This is also like post-COVID, right? Where it's like, we're not taking our whole family of seven, like, out to church. Well, I guess but, you don't really believe in God then. <laughs> you can pray from home, Thomas. Well, I guess if you're that afraid of meeting him, I don't believe that you love him that much. It says, take a few minutes and thank God for the blessings that he has given you. Identify them together. I knew this was going to be one as soon as I found the site. It's on the site, though, and there are people who would appreciate it. I love it. Take time together to identify the things that are going well and thank God. I think that is practicing gratitude. Yes. So I'm into that. I know. Next one. Set boundaries with your kids. Yeah. We want no, like our put fencing up. Absolutely. <laughs> put deadbolts on their doors. Jesus put Christ. them to bed at 7 p.m. You yeah. are not allowed out until 7 a.m. Right. The the light will turn green. Oh, there's at a 7 lot of ladies that got in trouble for that shit, Kelly. <laughs> That's true. That lady just went to prison I for know a long some time. Of those women. We want our kids to know that we love them, but good parenting doesn't mean catering to them in their every whim. No. I like that statement quite a bit, actually. It's hard. Because you love them. It's a gentle balance. It says there's a book that they quote, but then it also says the main thing is that children need to know that they are loved, but they are not your spouse. They are not the captain or the co-captain of the ship. I'm pretty fortunate that they don't, my kids don't dictate what my relationships are ever. There was a whole, I've seen so many podcasts and websites and blogs about like, whether it's your children or your spouse first. We've touched Stop on this. It. A cu- Stop it. We have touched on this in my my clinical belief you system. First. How about that? How about you first? It should be. Higher power if you, it's a pyramid. Yeah. Higher power if you have one. Eddie Van Halen. Top of the pyramid. Two. Wife, husband. Wife, wife. Husband, husband. Partner. Two partners. Or next. Five. Next. Is your children. Yeah. That is how it's supposed to go. Next is your work. After that, it's like your education yeah. or your community or whatever. But like higher power, two individuals, X individuals, maybe you have a wonky, a wonky pyramid that should come first. Cause at the end of the day, when they're all grown, it's just you. Very controversial thing. That is probably the foundation that leads into all of these issues. Yeah. Is you're my husband forever. I only have my kids for a little while, so they have to be the priority. We all know that's not true. It's actually what gets most couples caught up. 100%. I hear it all the time. I, I only have them for so the long. Time. It's my, uh, you do. it has to be my job. You do. 100% but of the time. If you put them to bed at a normal time, guess what? You can still fucking hang out with your partner. It's a balance. That's why it I is. like the verbiage. And on we're this, not saying on ignore your kids. We're not no. saying not feed your kids. Love your kids. But, Parent them together. But let's be honest. Most kids don't want to fuck with their parents that much. I, I am actually pretty partial to the concept that they shouldn't want to fuck with you that much. I didn't. Did you? 
No. Reasonable. No. Like, you like seeing your mom or your dad, and you're like, oh, hey, sure. what's up at school? And then like this, deuces, gotta go. I'm going to go to so-and-so's. Is that okay? Yeah. I'll see you this weekend. Yeah. I go in my room and listen to music and read magazines. Yeah. Before the internet. <laughs> right over my head until the punchline <laughs> make decisions together that's a bigger one than most people would care to identify well there's the tricky one because I'm telling, you. I'm telling you right now i see a lot of couples that one person doesn't want to make any fucking decisions but yet they have an opinion after you make one Ooh, that's ugly you think you don't deal with that not usually oh listen some, I usually somebody have like always the, leads the charge, right? The passive one that is okay with any decision. Because they don't care. Because they agreeable. don't care. And then the other, I guess it is kind of the aftermath of like, that's not the decision I would have made. But it usually isn't as negative as what you just made. It's like they're still processing while another one is like a trigger puller. Like we have to make a call. Listen, my friend's girl, he told me he was trying to make a chicken coop, build one from mm -hmm. scratch. Mm -hmm. And she's so particular about the shape. The roof line, everything. That's weird. And he said this, I will not work on this unless you're here and you draw out a design. She goes, I don't want to draw out a design. He goes, honey, I want to please you. I want you to be the way it is. I'll help you draw it just so we have an understanding. So I, I'm not making you mad. <laughs> Worst case scenario, what happens? He built this coop and it's wrong. And then no, what? No, no, no. He's not doing that. What would happen? Do you know or no? She would be disappointed. He doesn't want to disappoint her. She's mm -hmm. she's already, you know, but that's damage from previous owners, I'd imagine. Okay, sure. You know, I don't know that for a fact, but, you her know. car fax is fucked. I get it. Well, and I, he just wants to make her happy because he loves the shit out of her. Yeah. And I love that. So, you know, if you have something you're super serious about, you have to take the reins. If you that's want to make fair. decisions together, some people are not good decision makers. No offense. I don't know when to fuck your, you know. It's a personality a type sometimes. They're just, it's not that they're poor decision makers. Sometimes it's that they're indecisive or ambiguous about something because they just have to process through. Yes. And in all general, things. you should talk about reasonable things together, make decisions together. But mm -hmm. there's times that that's not like you got to make a decision right then and there. You don't have access to that person, whatever. Sure. It's not written in stone. So don't be so hard on it. Like every decision we have to make is together. It's like, well, that's just preposterous. That's strong. You this know, is saying walk out and go. Is this enough toothpaste? Discuss important decisions together and listen yeah. to one another's opinion. You want to hear the best joke? Yes. One of my best friend's parents were married for fifty some years, and on their fiftieth anniversary with their party, mm -hmm. dad went up and he did like two minutes of stand up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said, he goes, we made an agreement when we got married that I would handle all the major decisions and she would handle all the minor decisions. And people just looked at him like, and he goes, we've yet to have any major decisions. <laughs> <laughs> the cutest thing ever. <laughs> it was absolutely lovely. But here's an interesting thing about them. He came up and we were talking at the party. I said, man, you really love her. He has been together a long time. He goes, Thomas, they always made, she always made my kids look like a million bucks. Whenever we went somewhere, the mm -hmm. kids just always looked great. Yeah. He got sick and he ended up passing away. But I was over helping them do some stuff at the house and we were having lunch. And I said that story. He never told her that. Mm. Not in a mean way. No. But, but she that was one of the things that he up, appreciated dude, most about and her. And it hit her. And she had been with him 50 some years, but she it hit her in a way that was so sweet that I, you know, I was so thankful that I got to share that with her. Yeah. Because, you know, he never. That matters because it matters. But not everybody says the things that matter because they don't know that it fucking matters. We don't like, know until you know. Yeah. So just calm down, fuckers. People are so bitter. They just want to have something to hold on to well, sometimes. That's their language. The next one is discuss the tense topics. Mm. It is so much better yeah. to get it out and identify things as you go. Because if you are child rearing, so if, if we're taking the stereotypical family system, right? You dated for 
I'm going to say four years. Yeah. Three to five. That's a shot in the dark, but I feel like it's probably to right. Yeah. Totally normal. You're married. I'm going to say for, again, probably two to five. I almost say a year to three. You think? They're I didn't want quick. to go that small. They're moving quick. And now you're having babies. Yeah. A family is a whole new thing. That It's a whole new tra- transitional space. Zero to one, monumental. One to two, I don't know about you, I didn't feel like it was that monumental. Two to three, mind blown. It's mind blown until they're eight. Yeah. And then they close the door behind them. They're like... And then they're good, right. Yeah. So it says many couples believe their marriage is strong because they rarely argue. This is something that I've talked to Andrew about. He's like, we never fight. And I was like, I would love to fight you. (laughs) I would like, when we were first dating, I talked to my therapist about it. And she was like, that's not healthy. That is not. I mean, it depends on your, your, if if you you have have shit to say. Yes. If one of you has resentment, yes, it's bad not to fucking talk. Not necessarily resentment. (laughs) Just like if you have shit to say, but you are constantly biting your tongue no, it's not Even necessary. subconsciously, so, like as to not create create drama. It's a, it's a weird thing because we're told to pick your battles. Yes. So are you just saving it up but, for a real battle? Or are you saving up? And I think honestly, people struggle with what a battle is sometimes. Well, depending on who you were with before your person, mm-hmm. that is how you're going to kind of dance around until you learn a new dance. Like sure. if you talk to your ex person, and every time you brought anything up, they're like, "Oh, so I'm just a fucking horrible fucking husband, or I'm a horrible right. fucking wife." I guess I'm a shitty mom. Yeah, then you're like this. Sure. Then the next time you feel like talking to him, you're like this. <laughs> right. No. No. Nope. There's there's so many unhealthy conflict patterns, right? Where it's yeah. like garbage. Yes, there are gaslighting where it's like playing the victim or yeah. like pivoting and projecting and making you feel crazy. Like, oh my God, we, I can't even come home five minutes late because like it wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't even talking about that. I was talking about the fact that I made dinner and it what like you can't talk about anything. You can't talk about anything. So you stop talking. Right. So, but this is saying like picking your battles does not necessarily mean don't fight every fight. It's saying decide what is worth fighting about. Put it in a relationship book. Write it down. It is have some answer, things are are worth discussing. Hundred percent. Before you have kid two and kid three and buy your bigger house or add a dog or get a yeah. yard. Yard work is a hot topic. Yeah, we had we had a yard this big and it wasn't that big of a deal. And then we got a bigger yard for the dog and the kids. And now nobody fucking wants to do it because it's a lot. Or you're mad that they're out there doing it for six hours or they're like this. Hours. Hey, we got to get home. I got to go. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. That's like for the next three fucking grass. No, I've seen it. I know. Dude, a big yard is not for the lighthearted. I've been tattooing people and the guy's like, hey. We got to get home and do, well, I want to stop by my mom's. He's like, you can go to your mom's, but I'm going to go mow grass. It's supposed to rain for the next three days. And then I'm going to have to do it twice. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. So this is perfect because it does say discuss the tense topics, but then the next one is, but try not to sweat the small stuff. That's that balance, right? You can't brush everything under the rug. No. People like, I have been accused of being like confrontational. What? I, Ladies and gentlemen, you, we have a breakthrough today. You know me well enough to know I hate fighting. You don't have to I fight. Just let's get to it and get it the fuck over. Fighting, it. but I'm having feelings. I would like to discuss them because I sure as fuck don't want to discuss them four days later. Or be mad. Or four weeks later or four months later when the same thing happens because I bit my tongue the first time and therefore you didn't know. And sometimes you got to let them do it. Like maybe that was just the one off. Maybe it was. It, that's, sometimes it is just a one-off. That's usually where I land sometimes. But second like, time anymore, you're like, hey, 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 this is the second time you've done that. I feel like yeah. I need to draw your attention to this because this didn't set well. I've learned to be more patient when people confront me about something instead of knee-jerking. That's my new my new uh, thing. And I've been telling a lot of people, when you talk to someone, make it open-ended. Stop. Talk, have a conversation. Yes. Don't lecture them. Con- open and go, hey, I want to talk to you about this. You don't have to give me an answer right now. That's it. This is new. I'm kind of side we do that a lot yeah open-ended get back to me i was having i was (laughs) my our go-to anymore is like i was thinking and that that just naturally has kind of been like yeah our segue of like i was thinking and it's not always like a major conflict more often than not it's almost like goal oriented Mm. right of like i was thinking and what if if we worked on this 
if we did this or like we set this, maybe it's because it's spring and I'm exactly the people that I'm talking about, but things have to get done. So we usually segue with that. And then it's kind of like, and by the way, I hate your mother. I'm just kidding. You don't hate her, but I'm saying it'd be funny. By the way, I've been thinking, I actually think she's horrible and we should cut her off this year. This is it. Totally. Not even going to Easter. Before Mother's Day. Oof. On Mother's Day. We're not buying her a gift this Mother's Day. Burn down the bridge. No. I love my mom. I actually had to look up in my email because I'm taking to her comedy show at the end of the month. But end of the month in March is like in two weeks because it's actually not the end. It's the dead center middle. (laughs) Nice. But I've been thinking. I like it. That leaves it open. Find something. We don't have to fight. Calm the fuck down. We don't have to fight. But I also don't have to bite my tongue. There has to be some gray. You have to do it. Kindness. Where we just talk. Try it. It's weird. Just try it. People are weird. The next one is say thank you. And this is such a thing. Really? Do people not say thank you? No. I'm not thanking him for doing the dishes. That's our job. I'm not thanking her for giving the kids a bath. That's her job. The kids need a bath. All right. I don't know if you ladies and gentlemen just fucking heard me say that a woman who raised five fucking children and was married for 50 years still lit up when she heard that her husband was Noticed? so happy Great. proud of her. And so quit being a fucking asshole. Yeah. Ew. I have said to Andrew, I'm not thanking you. I came home one day and he was like, I cleaned the dining room. I turned around. We were in couples counseling. The actual preventative kind where it's like, hey, we've been married for a couple years and we have a fuck ton of kids. So I feel like we should have like marriage counseling. Yeah. Or start smoking opium. One or the other. Cursing, cussing, drinking. Yeah. Smoking something. Something. But I turned and I was like, I'm not going to thank you. And he like looked at me and I was like, I don't, I don't mean that to be shitty. I just, it has been a mess for like three days. And that is a common area. That is a household thing. I am not going to thank you for cleaning the dining room. I am going to tell you that it looks great. Yeah. That it's so clean. That it looks wonderful. Yeah. Good job. But I'm not going to thank you. (laughs) The, The golf clap. You did great, and now I don't have to do it. But why would I do it? Like there has to be some don't sort of like board narrative. Your house, you put up gold stars. Um, that's for my children, not for my husband. Yeah, I get it. But if he did something that was like his thing, like I thank him all the time for taking out the trash, for doing the lawn, for like those yeah. are things that are his jobs, and I do thank him for that. And I'm sure it had to do with the the vibe in the day. Or the week. Yeah, I came I'm home sure from working all day and he was like, I clean the dining room. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, Right. It looks great. But like, he was like looking to me for like Yeah, and that had praise. nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with me. I am not going to thank you. I am going to tell you that you did a good job, that it looks nice. Yeah. But I'm going to watch my verbiage and I I do want to draw my atten- your attention to my verbiage because this was not... Thank you sometimes implies it. that it's my job that you did. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had nothing to but do with. take time to let your your spouse know that you thank them, yeah. that you appreciate them. It matters. Thank you for taking out the cr- trash, cooking dinner. Yeah. A little kindness goes a long way. The main point for this one that I talk to couples all the time is your partner is not your enemy. You are on team household Smith. Nope. Team household Jones. Like nope. it we are all on the same team. Nope. nope. Yes. That's yes. Not how, it's 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 us and them. It's not though. And well, that, like that dynamic gets subconsciously so embedded. It's gross. The kids have to like me more. I have to cook better food. I have Dude. to clean more. I have to the buy dog more. Has to like I have me to more. I let him out, you don't let him out. Like that narrative is gross. So like if you don't if you take that component completely off the table, why wouldn't you thank your partner? Why wouldn't you thank anybody who does something nice? Stop it. When you're at a four way stop and somebody waves you through, do you not put your hand up? No. Stop it. Yes, I'm way too light complected and no. 
Mm-mm. <laughs> nope. Keep my hands down. <laughs> Next. Find activities you can enjoy together. Yeah. Other than You just sex. couldn't give me that one. Yeah. Activities you like to do together. Maybe you and your spouse already share some interests. I had a couple last week or two weeks ago. They were like, we have no common ground. We don't like the same music. We don't like the same movies. We don't like the same books. And I was like, why are you together? How did this happen? And they were like, opposite attracts. And I was like, that doesn't last very long. <laughs> like, we need to find something. It was the same couple that I sent that like hobby list to that right. I was like, if you don't have the same interest, that's fine. But could you learn new shit together? Because this is going to get hard. Or just accept it. Just they, accept y'all. Or... They don't know how to spend time together then. They don't know how to talk about stuff. They don't know how to. It has gotten that far. But Ooh. because they don't have some of this fundamental. Yeah, too. You and I could talk about music for three hours. Talk about fucking cornbread for three hours. I mean, like, if we honestly, wanted to. Yeah. I know. I love cornbread. That Me was too. a good analogy. Dude, hey, crumble cookies this week. Got a cornbread cookie. Just saying. Interesting. Yeah, I'm getting me one of them. It says, if not, you might want to brainstorm. Come up with something you'd enjoy pursuing together. So that whole concept of like trying something new. Yeah. Together. Go rock climbing. Go fishing. Go kayaking. Go for a hike. Like, not everything costs money. Honest to God. Yeah. Go do literally anything. Clean your fucking house together. I saw... Have you seen on TikTok (laughs) where they have like those international like snack boxes? No. That you can buy, so you can buy like, it's it's a subscription, like different kinds of candies from around the world. Yeah, yeah an Indonesian cool. s- snack box that comes. Wow, it it costs like fourteen dollars. Like it, do that once a month, something. Yeah, something to try together. Last one, dream together about the future. I like that. Have I have literally had. Couples make like vision boards. Have you ever heard of like vision boards? Yeah. Guys, you cut out magazine collage, right? You cut out or print off pictures. Yeah. You can make one. They can make one. You can compare. You can make one big one. But common goals, I guess the point of this whole thing is like (laughs) raising small children or children in general is and should be temporary in a lot of ways. 18 years is a long time, but not compared to 30, 40, 50 years. Like, I'm sure everything wasn't, you know, perfect for 50 years. No. But I'll tell you what, they, they worked hard. They, they had a farm together. They worked normal jobs, but they had a farm and they had yeah. five kids. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like that couple said earlier, you know, they, they put themselves in a, I don't know if I said on here, was it, I think it was out there. She asked her, she'd been married 31 years ago, what's the, what's the key? you guys and they said we bought a big property and we just work on it and we build things together and we just take care of our property it's what yeah, we did i think that do. was here yeah, yeah they were busy yeah it's super important you know i mean but you gotta have something that either you respect that he does or she does like if she's super into horses or she's super into crocheting or whatever the fuck she's into just support it and go can i get you anything for it or can i you know that looks Buy you cool. something for it. You yeah, seem it like great. you're enjoying it. I'm a <laughs> I'm a hobby hopper. So yeah. I kind of cycle yeah. between the same four, five, six things. Yes. Kind my husband painting. knows what it yeah. yeah. My yeah, husband so knows what it is. And yoga. I was painting the other day and he came in and I kind of like tilted because he knows I don't like people to look until like it's done. Yeah. Familiar. He came in and he was like, Are you done? And I was like, Yeah, and I showed it to him and he was like, That's really cool. Yeah. That's it. I didn't even need him to tell me that he liked it or yeah. that it was good. He just said it was cool. I, it wasn't about He's not you. An art critic. It, like it Sorry. has nothing to do with you. I could go kayaking and he could say the same thing. That sounds fun. Yeah. That's it. But know what your partner's goals are for them as an individual and what your partner's and don't get like, in their way. Why would you? Okay, you know why. I know, but why? Well, because we're hateful little fucks. People are insecure. I just had a conversation with two people from a couple, but I meet with them individually. And I was like, wouldn't it be ideal if the things that you love about your partner, other people did see? No, you don't want that. Wouldn't it be awesome if everybody who met them saw them how 
how you see, beautiful and unique and gorgeous and they still came home to you yeah well wouldn't that be ideal are afraid they don't want to share anything they have that's nice because they're afraid someone's well, going to steal it and these individuals are in therapy and they both individually two hours separate came to tears with that if like that is what i want but yeah. this is my shit dude and I was like, but you can't dim their light. That's like you taking the spotlight and just twisting it. That's yeah, gross. That's what they do. Worst case scenario, they leave. Make you smaller. What happens if they leave? No, oh, you break them so good that they're afraid to leave. No, but that's what I said. I'm like. No one it, will want you. You shine the light on them or let them shine the light on them and they leave. You live. You'd be fine. Yeah. And I just hope it. your relationship is so much better when you both realize that you could be fine without each other. Because you're a whole human, they're a whole human. You're both impressive. Yeah, power couple. Yeah. In a, in a perfect world. That's what we should strive for, you so guys. If you got littles, put their asses to bed. Mm -hmm. Fuck your mate. <laughs> Tell them thank you. Be sweet to them. Help them around. Make some date nights, which is a romantic uh, appointment. Appointment. Um. And that could be anything. It doesn't have to be all night. It doesn't have to be this crazy big thing. And if you really want that, then plan it. Or be with somebody that's okay with you planning it. Or you... or, or voice it. Just say, I'd li I would like to spend yeah, time with you. But, okay. Can we have a date night? But I'm telling you right now, I talk to a lot of men. And when women spring that on us, it makes us crazy. Because we're not good at it. And like, well, you should be better no. at it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I mean, right. if you want quality time with me, but you know I'm the keeper... Yeah. of the books yeah i can't like that's gross stop doing that whoever the keeper of the books is like accept that and embrace that because you want to be a boss any other time absolutely you know so what are you supposed to do get into my phone heaven forbid and check my calendar to make sure that like yeah, just no stop it if you want to go on a date night if go, you're the hey. if you're the boss then be the boss and accept the fact that they verbalize that they want to spend quality time period the end yeah Thank you. That makes me feel good. I like it. So everybody, prepare for spring. Clean up your yard. <gasps> are your flowers popping up? I don't know. My not, daffodils not are popping front. Daffodils and sunflowers are my two favorite. Yeah. Because daffodils are spring and sunflowers are fall. They're both yellow. Do you know what Mike likes to plant? Tulips. I love tulips. Mike does too. I love tulips. He's a tulip lover. I don't have any in my flower garden. Yeah, Mike doesn't have any tulips either. He'd like some of them on him, though. <laughs> Justin just told us a very old, dirty joke, and it was pretty good. I wish you guys could have heard him. Well, now I'm just like, are we even talking about flowers? Yes. Or are you guys all dirty? Yes. yes. Mike, do you have tulips at your house? He'd like some. He said. He did not. I can feel it. I can <laughs> oh small kings baby small oh kings. my god all right guys so uh have a great Wrap it week up, Thomas. uh be good to each other if you got kids together you liked each other long enough to fucking make them so just remember what got you there that's fair all right bye bye